Well, voting season is uh, officially on in the world's biggest election in India. Three voting phases of the allotted seven are over with four more to go. And my colleague Shivan gets you the latest. Absolutely, Raisha. It's been a packed schedule ever since these elections have been going over phase after phase. In the next five minutes, we'll get you a roundup of all the latest updates in the realm of Indian politics. This is Poll Countdown. Let's begin. Now, starting with the latest from the third phase of Lok Sabha elections in India, a voter turnout of nearly 65% was recorded in the third phase of general elections, which just concluded yesterday across 93 constituencies in 11 states and union territories combined as per the election commission of india the northeastern state of assam now this state recorded the highest turnout at 81.71 percent followed by west bengal at 76.52 percent and goa at 75.2 percent the key electoral state of uttar pradesh which has 80 constituencies witnessed the lowest turnout voter turnout at 57.34 percent Meanwhile, Gujarat stood at 59.51% and Maharashtra at 61.44%, demonstrating a slightly better turnout this time. The overall voting percentage stood at 64.58%. As many as 172.4 million Indians voted in the third phase of the Lok Sabha elections, which included 83.9 million women. Now, the fourth phase of polling will take place on the 13th of May across 96 seats in 10 states, including for all 25 and 17 seats of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, respectively. The Bahujan Samaj Party chief Mayawati announced the removal of her nephew Akash Anand as her political heir barely after six months into his appointment. Mayawati, however, did not spell out what prompted the decision but said that her nephew needs to reach maturity before he assumes these roles. The Bahujan Samaj Party leader was booked along with other party leaders by the Sitapur police in Uttar Pradesh 10 days ago for promoting hatred and enmity. Anand had stirred a controversy for calling BJP the government of traitors. He urged voters to hit the representatives of the rival parties with shoes and slippers. Anand was charged under Indian Penal Code sections for promoting enmity during an election campaign. The case was filed against him on 28th of April. All his campaign rallies at different constituencies were cancelled by the Election Commission. Now, Mayavati, in a post on social media, said that the BSP party is a movement for self-respect, self-esteem. And Akash Anand is being removed as the national coordinator in the larger interest of the party and the movement. Shifting focus to Rajasthan, re-polling will begin today in the Barmer Lok Sabha seat after reports of the breach of confidentiality of vote. Now, according to Chief Electoral Officer Praveen Gupta, the Election Commission has given instructions to start re-polling in Dudhwa Khard village today. The poll body also suspended at least four members over confidentiality breaches. All the preparations for re-polling, including the webcasting, have been made. The voting is set to take place today from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. at polling centre number 50 at the government higher secondary school Dudva Khard booth in Chotan Assembly constituency. Earlier, the re-polling was held in Ajmer Lok Sabha constituency on the 2nd of May after voters registered was misplaced. A polling was initially held there on the 26th of April under the second phase of the Lok Sabha elections. In neighbouring Haryana state, the BJP government has spiralled into a political crisis after three independent MLAs withdrew their support and announced that they will campaign for the Congress party instead. The three MLAs, Sombir Sagwad, Grandhir Golan and Dharampal Gondar, wrote to Haryana governor Bandaru Dattatreya saying that they were leaving the Saini-led BJP government with immediate effect. BJP is now left with only 40 MLAs in the 90-member Haryana assembly. Ten Lok Sabha seats in Haryana are set to go to polls on the 25th of May. The former Haryana Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar denies that this will have any impact in the upcoming polls, adding that the BJP party is in touch with many MLAs to come up with a solution. Congress, however, is demanding a presidential rule in the state and early elections. The Haryana Assembly elections have been scheduled for October and November this year. Election Commission has directed the Telangana government to defer payments under the Raitu Bharosa scheme. 
Now, this came after Chief Minister Rivant Reddy violated the model code of conduct by referring to the disbursement of Rabi payments installments in his public speeches. The poll body in a letter to Telangana Chief Electoral Officer CEO said that the payments for the 2023 Rabi season would have been made by Reddy by January 2024 and that the Chief Minister's public announcements about the payouts under the scheme on or before 9th of May are a violation of the model code of conduct rules. It added that the payments under Raitu Bharosa will take effect only after polling is completed in the state on the 13th of May. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi has evoked sharp rebuke from the people of Vayanad in Kerala after he filed his nomination from Rai Bareli in Uttar Pradesh. Now, voters in Vayanad are hoping that Rahul Gandhi will retain his seat in Vayanad constituency that saved him in the 2019 election, even if he won Rai Bareli. Congress party leader's Rai Bareli nomination was met with discontent among his staunchest voters in the Kerala constituency. And now the electorate fears that if Gandhi emerged victorious in the Uttar Pradesh Rai Bareli seat, he might desert Vayanad. Congress suffered a major setback after Vayanad District Congress Committee General Secretary quit the party and joined BJP instead, saying that the grand old party has lost relevance and that Rahul Gandhi hasn't campaigned in Vayanad in the last five years. While there's considerable debate over Rahul Gandhi choosing Rai Bareli over Amethi in northern India, in Kerala, the Congress party leader faces its own challenge. All right, in other updates coming in our poll countdown segment. India is the fastest growing major economy in the world, but the contribution from India's rural economy has been disappointing since the pandemic. Now, experts suggest the country's general elections may finally drive rural demand and accelerate national growth. Take a look at this next report to find out more. India has completed three out of seven phases of polling to elect its next government. A key trend to note here is the voter turnout levels. Rural India has consistently recorded a better voter turnout than their urban counterparts. That's because rural India could emerge as the biggest beneficiary of the poll season. A surge in campaign spending is expected to drive increased rural consumption. Products such as vehicles and fast-moving consumer goods could see the highest demand, according to some reports. Political and economical observers also cite historical data that suggests rural demand picks up after an election year. That's because political parties distribute freebies and dole out cash to voters despite a strict crackdown by election commission officials. While polls can accelerate rural demand, India's rural citizens still rely heavily on job opportunities created by the agricultural sector. That means citizens in villages and small towns will look for optimal monsoons to boost their incomes and consumption. Be report we on world is one all right that's all we have for you on poll watch today as of now at this hour for your daily updates this is where you tune in for now it's back to eurasia for more updates